and I'm going to sit right here. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Finally, somebody asks. <laughs> it's just waiting, because I want to. And I can. Oh, you want to go get them? OK, we'll go. So now, do you have something in your hands that you didn't have when you started the children's message? Yes. yes. Great. That's exciting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You just ran out and got it. <laughs> just happened to be there on the ground. Just a gift from God. Fell down from heaven. No, it didn't. Oh, it didn't? No, it didn't. It was from you. <laughs> it was from me? Yeah. So you just ran out and got something that I laid on the ground for you? Yeah. And? Oh, thank you. Well, now there's something that was kind of missed by a lot of people. Not that I threw it out there for you to say thank you, but when you get a gift, is it something that is owed to you, or is it something you could say thank you for? You could say thank you for, or you could just be happy that you have it, run away and start licking your lollipop. That's okay, because I bet a lot of people out there do exactly the same thing. They grab and go. So... Exactly. Grab and go. (laughs) I bet she's not a Samaritan. She's not coming back. (laughs) Isn't that just like kind of life? You have something right in front of you, you run after you, you get it, and you're happy, but you kind of forget. Do we use those words that say thank you? Do we use those words that say, hmm, I didn't start the children's sermon with something, but I'm going to end with something, and I'm grateful. And you know what? It's really easy to go, wow, what good fortune. Wow, I am so glad that I have this, but we forget. You are a Samaritan, welcome back. (laughs) And this is not about being guilty to say, oh, you should say thank you, I don't actually care. But it's how quickly we think we have something and we forget to stop and say, where did that good gift come from? Was it that I deserved to get it or was it a gift and I should be acknowledging that somebody gave that gift to me. Whether it's a Christmas gift or a birthday gift or a lollipop on the ground in church, do we stop and say, thanks? And that's what today's message is all about. That's what Jesus was trying to actually get into the heads of the people who were listening to him and these 10 guys who ran after something, grabbed it and went, and only one came back. So as you listen to the message, think about you've got something that you've been given, and did you run after it, and did you stop and say, hmm, thanks, or did you just take it and go? Because we all do that, and we're going to stop today, and we're going to take some time to thank God for all the stuff that he has given us. So let's uh, fold your hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we stop now and say thank you for everything you've done. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Hi. Do you want to stay up here with me? I get kind of bored sometimes. I'm all by myself up here. I think mommy wants you to go back. But I have candy. <laughs>
uh, like adults, like kids, like kids, like adults, we grab and go. This isn't the first group of kids to grab and go. It's not the first group of adults to grab and go. It was grab and go 2,000 years ago, and that's exactly what the gospel was about. There were 10 men who were calling out to Jesus, Jesus, please have mercy on us. And they grabbed the healing and they went because that's what they expected to have happen. They called out to Jesus, Jesus answered their prayer, and they went. Now, there was, there was an act of faith in what happens with these 10 men because, because Jesus says, go and show yourself. And they begin to go even before they see the healing. So there's not really an indictment against the 10. It's not an indictment because Jesus didn't pull back the healing of the other nine. He said, go, show yourself to the priests, and you will, as you go, will be healed. So every one of them showed that sense of faith in that Jesus says go, I'm gonna go after what Jesus said to do. So good on them. But it's interesting that one stopped, turns around, runs back, and falls face down at the feet of Jesus and says thank you. Jesus acknowledges what? None of the Jewish people could come back and do this. It had to be a foreigner. Nothing against foreigners. But I think it does begin to spell out in Jesus' heart and mind the expectations of a group of people and another group of people that didn't expect anything and were grateful for what they had been given. And there is the defining line. Do we expect, and when it comes, it's not really a gift, it's, well, I deserve this. I am a Jewish man and I have leprosy and the Messiah should do something like show up and fix it because I'm a Jewish man with leprosy? Or am I a Samaritan man who's dying of a disease that somehow I got, and any amount of grace, any amount of of healing, I would be grateful for? So can Jesus, can you do something? Because I'm not worthy of it, but I would certainly appreciate it. Two different sides of the same healing. And so the ten go running off, and then one comes back, falls at Jesus' feet, and says, thank you. And then Jesus says, arise and go, your faith has made you well. Did you ever catch that? He was already healed. It already happened. He'd already run off with the other nine, and as they were running, they got healed. He ran back, fell down, and said, thank you. And Jesus said, well, stand up. Your faith has made you well. I'm confused by the words here. So as he was running back, did his healing just all of a sudden disappear, and he healed him again? Or was the second healing something deeper and more lasting? And that's exactly the point of what we're going to talk about today, because as we journey in faith and go through this sermon series, today it's about embracing thankfulness. Because embracing thankfulness takes you to a whole different level of healing than just being fixed on the surface. Those nine were fixed, and they actually believed that they were entitled to be fixed because they were Jewish, and God should do something because they had been crying out to him and lamenting, and now he shows up. And the one who was a Samaritan, yes, he was fixed, but he was also healed because he realized that God is gracious. And God steps beyond boundaries and people groups. God goes into the most unexpected places and he gifts people with life. And that wasn't expected in the life of the Samaritan. And he realized there's more than just my skin that has been fixed here. There's something deeper and more lasting that has been fixed by Jesus, and I owe him my life. No, I owe him my eternity. And he falls down at Jesus' feet to worship him now, not as a great physician, but as God. And Jesus says, rise and go, your faith has made you well, meaning you know we're going to be together for eternity. You know full well that this healing is going to last this lifetime but your wellness is going to last for eternity. And there's the depth of thanksgiving. Do we stand on the side of those nine and we are thankful when God shows up and gives us what we want and what we need because after all, shouldn't he? Isn't that his job? He is, after all, God. And isn't it in God's job description to take care of people? I mean, he did create us. He has some obligation to us, right? And 
good heavens, we show up almost every Sunday and we sit here for an hour plus, so there is some kind of paycheck I should get. Come on, people. Yes, God, show up. Or are we on the other side to say, you know what? I'm a half breed, I am sinner and saint. I am certainly not in the family of God by my own doing. Because by my own doing, I am not in relationship with God. What I can do on my own is send myself directly to hell. And I do that well. But it's when Jesus shows up and he says, you know what? You sinner and saint, I love you. Not for what you do, but because I love you. And I want you to be healed and whole to the very depth of your soul. So go, run after and live your healed life, but know that the healing, it wasn't an obligation. It wasn't because I had to. It's because I wanted to, because I love you. How often do we go running after things out there in the world, like lollipops on the ground, and we are grateful when we have it? Look what I have. And we stop, we don't stop, and remember, who put that blessing out there? Who dropped that opportunity right in front of me? Who connected me to that person? Who connected me to that person? Who connected me to that person? So now I am where I am. Who knitted together all the choices of my life, good and bad, to bring me to this place? Who dropped those blessings into my life? And if we are like those first nine, we take it for granted that that's what God should do. And if we take it like the last one, it stops us in our tracks. And it causes us to turn around and to look at Jesus and say, wow, thank you. Wow. And it's in that turning around and looking at Jesus that he sends us back to our life with a whole new depth of wellness. Because I begin to realize those things he drops into my life, they make life now really, really good. Really tasty, really pleasant, unless you're sad because you didn't get one and you'll get one, you got one. Thank you, Achilles, for working that out over there with an uh, extra one. But what we begin to realize like the Samaritan is the blessings of this life aren't really just about my life here. Every blessing I have should stop me in my tracks, so I stop for just a moment and go, this is just a foretaste of the feast to come. These blessings are simply the beginning of a story of eternal blessings that will have no end. As good as the blessings are in this life, they just remind me that because I am well with God because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, this is just the introduction to the story. And if this introduction has some pretty good blessings, imagine when you get into the full chapters what the story is going to be in heaven. Because if we're so worried about just grabbing the lollipop and licking it now until it's gone, and we throw it away going, what's next? We miss the point that every one of these points us to heaven. What's next? Heaven. And when I know that my eternal destiny is secure, because it's well with my soul, because I call Jesus my Lord and my Master, arise and go, your faith has made you well and whole and complete, then I don't need the lollipops on the ground to keep me going because to the depth of my soul I know no matter the good days or the bad days the struggles or the victories heaven awaits and that is a deeper sense of peace than just having a skin disease cured for this lifetime 
because my sinfulness has been cured for eternity. That's what the Samaritan gained that day. Not just a healing of leprosy, but a sense that there is a God who cares about me, a half-breed foreigner rejected by the community, outcast, looked down upon, spit upon, rejected, and ridiculed, and yet God says, I love you. So if you ever feel outcast or ridiculed or spit upon or pushed aside or disenfranchised or forgotten, you have a God that says, I got you on my radar, and I'm not letting you go. It was that realization that brought true healing to the Samaritan. And it's that realization that brings true, true healing and peace and even contentment in this life. Because whether or not the leprosy stayed healed, whether or not the Samaritan was ever accepted in the community, whether or not the Samaritan ever found another lollipop on the ground, he found heaven. And that meant sense of contentment every day. Because life might be hard, but God is good. Life might be challenging, but God is faithful. And he walked away from that encounter with Jesus going, there is nothing else out there that I have to face alone. There's nothing else out there that makes me shudder in my boots because this Jesus came into my village and into my life and now I realize I don't walk this alone but I walk it with the very God of the universe. That's how Jesus could say the second time around, arise and go, your faith has made you well. Well, because there was a deep sense of contentment that now resided in the heart of the Samaritan. What would that look like this afternoon in your life with your family? What would it look like tomorrow or the day after when you go back to work in your work environment if you showed up as a content Christian? What would that change about your spouse if you were actually content? You wouldn't have to change them because you would be content. What would it do with your job? You wouldn't have to change your work because all of a sudden you could be content. What would happen if you could begin to live life content? Because you were thankful that the eternal questions and the big challenges have been healed by Jesus. And that all this stuff is just little. And every once in a while, there's a lollipop to remind you, God's still tracking with me down this life and through this journey. He's still with me. And every time I see a blessing... I'm going to take it as a, as a gift and I'm going to stop and turn and be in awe of this Jesus that says, I got your back. I got your sides. I got your front. What are you stressed over? What are you worrying about? I got you. You don't know where the next paycheck is going to come from or how it's going to stretch. Are you alive today? Are you eating today? Are you breathing today? Well, great. Tomorrow we'll talk again. And the day after that, let's talk again. And the day after that, let's talk again. That Samaritan walked away thinking, if Jesus cares enough about this, then Jesus cares enough full stop. And that's for us as well. Is there a blessing that you can think of right now in your head? Because if you have one, then that means Jesus cares enough 
full stop. It's a lollipop on the ground to say, here's a gift, but let that gift remind you of the greater gift, that heaven is open for you. So don't just grab the lollipop and start licking. Stop for a moment. Turn around. Face Jesus and say, thank you. Thank you, because I am well because of you. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that peace keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Having heard the word of the